Hi. Welcome to a job well done. Are you excited? You know I am. So today what I'm going to be doing is putting in an M2 NVMe uh, PCI Express adapter into one of my PCIe 4 slots um, on my motherboard. And this is to expand my M2 drive slot from one that I currently have on the motherboard that's serving the drive that uh, holds my operating system on it. This will be a second drive that I throw in uh, mainly for gaming, stuff like that. I've been noticing that I have some slow load times whenever any sort of resources are trying to be loaded from the current 5400 RPM drive. I have them on right now. I know it's kind of ancient. But anyway, so what I'm going to be using is, uh, first of all, I just had to get an adapter. Uh, I just kind of found an adapter on Amazon that had good reviews. This one's the Easy DIY Fab. Looked pretty good, had good reviews. No one's writing anything bad about it. So I'm um, going to go ahead and try this one out. And then for the drive itself, I'm going to be using a Samsung 970 Evo. Uh, I haven't used any of the Samsung drives yet, but everyone that I talk to basically says that they're the best M2 drives out there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. And afterwards, we're going to run some tests on it and see what kind of speed we're getting out of the card, make sure everything's working good. So without further ado, let's get it done. All right, now to get started, we're going to first go ahead and get the M2 drive out. Make sure that the M2 drive that you're using is an NVMe M2 drive, kind of like the one I'm using here. The way you can tell that apart from a SATA M2 drive is, an, is a SATA M2 drive will have two notches on it, one for the M key, one for the B key, where the NVMe M2 drive will only have one notch for the M key. Once you do that, you can go ahead and get your PCIe adapter. Once you get them together, uh, go ahead and slide the M2 drive into the PCIe adapter. And when you slide it in, the M2 drive will kind of sit up off the board at, a, at an angle. That's okay, as long as it's in there, everything's good. So what you're gonna do is actually press that down against the PCIe card, um, and then attach this screw at the end, which will hold it in place. Once you do that, you're ready to go ahead and put this in your board. So locate one of the PCIe slots that are available. I would recommend if your board has a PCIe 4 slot to use it. Otherwise, it will work in the 8 or 16 slots. Um, so you're just going to go ahead, take your card, insert it into one of those PCIe slots, and then we're ready to move on. All right, so we got the computer back up. Uh, we've installed the adapter we put the m2 drive in and so i've started up my computer and looking here but i don't see the drive pop up right so i see like my local disk and i see uh, my other disk that i have on here but i don't see you know these two disks but i don't see the um, new disk that i just added in the uh, 500 gig or gig disk so uh just to make sure that everything's working right the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead to device manager um, Pull it up, go to disk drives, which is this option right here, and open it up. And okay, so we can see the different disk drives. We can see my Intel drive that has my operating system on it. We can see the Samsung hard disk drive that I have in here. And then we can also see the SSD that I just installed. All right, so what we're gonna need to do is actually go ahead and set up a volume for this so it's gonna work. So the way you do this, go ahead and, and Windows 10 at least, right click on the start menu, go to disk management, you actually get a uh, prompt here saying that I, you must initialize the disk. And sure enough, there's disk one. So let's go ahead and initialize it. There's the two uh, options right here. We're just going to go ahead and do GPD. GPT, should say. All right. All right. So it's uh, on, but now it's unallocated. So it doesn't actually have anything uh, on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and click create a new simple volume. Walk through the wizard. We're just going to go ahead and use um, the maximum amount of space that will let us use because I don't feel like making two partitions on here. Go assign it, assign it a drive letter. This doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know. What do we want it to be? Uh, it's going to be our fast drive. So let's see. So I have D and C are already used. I mean, I could just go for E. Or I could go for C. I like Z for some reason. Let's go with Z. All right, uh, don't need to do anything here. All right, uh, go ahead and do the regular file settings and volume labels. So this is the 
volume label is what you actually want to call the um, drive itself. So um, this is going to be the drive I use for games, and it's supposed to be fast. And I'm a huge Dolphins fan. I'm going to call it Dolphin. Good old Dolphin drive. And we're going to do a quick format. Click Next. All your information looks good. It's called Dolphin. Z, cool. All right, and boom. It's fast. We now have our new drive, Dolphin Drive Z. Go ahead and close this out. And sure enough, here's Dolphin Drive Z. I can actually double click on it. And voila, this drive's up and running. All right, so now that we have the drive on here, let's go ahead and run some tests on it, okay? Um, and make sure that everything is working right. So I've gone ahead and downloaded uh, Crystal Disk Mark. The, just a little, um, basically it just does sequential reads and writes and then it also kind of tells you uh, based upon the uh, number of, if I remember correctly, there's a setting for this. Oh. Hmm. Oh, there you go, queues and threads, sorry. Basically, you can choose the number of queues and the number of threads, um, and it'll spit you out what the read and write speeds are on the uh, device itself. We'll go ahead and do default, and we'll select uh, a new drive, Z here, and just leave everything the same. So it's going to test with, uh, well, we'll just do one gig just to keep things nice. So let's go ahead and run the tests. All right. So while it does this, uh, this might take a little while, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it run. And once it gets done, I'll get back, get back and we'll see what we got. All right, so we're back. Crystal Disk Mark did what it was set out to do. And let's see, so we got a read speed of 3,500 megabytes per second and a write speed of 2,500 megabits per, megabytes per second. It's pretty fast. So I'm pretty pleased with that. The only thing is as I was doing a little bit of research and this user benchmark actually had a different speed listed. So here's user benchmark. This is the pro on the left. We're only concentrating here on the right, which is on the Evo. And you can see that their uh, lab benchmarks actually have this at uh, 2,500, almost 2,600 megabytes per second for read and 24, almost 24 100 megabytes per second right so i just i kind of figured the crystal disk mark versus user benchmark might be an apples to oranges comparison so i went ahead and ran the user benchmark uh, for my machine to test the drive itself and sure enough it looks like that's the case so this is the actual drive here in the middle and when i ran it on my machine it actually had the reads at uh 2400 almost 2500 uh, megabytes per second read and the write at 2243 so you know 20 yeah right there in the middle so either way it's really fast i'm sure i'm going to be happy with it it's really good so that pretty much wraps up um, installing this drive on my machine and you know if you guys like this video go ahead and give it a like also, don't forget to subscribe to the page. It really helps me out if you do. In the meantime, I'll try to knock out a few more of these videos in the coming weeks, and hopefully you guys can learn something or maybe um, share some information from experiences you've had trying to do this. So in the meantime, this has been a job well done. Thanks for hanging around.